<laughs> All right, go ahead. Go ahead. Freeze each other out, and then I'll sit down and take it away, brother. Let's turn on the Them, them that don't, Lord, soften their hard hearts. <laughs> I don't know what the argument is between these two cowhands, ma'am, but whatever it is, I can settle it fair and square in my favor. Howdy, Trampus. When did you blow in? Hello, Steve. Just blowed in to beat your time with this lady. Ain't that so, ma'am? But, senor, I promised to drink with these gentlemen. Yeah? Well, you and me are leaving, see? Just one minute, please. Don't look like you're beating anybody's time, Trampus. Not even yours. I ain't arguing with you, sweetheart. I'm telling you. These no arguments, Trampus. We're getting along just fine. Not that it's any of your business. Well, who's talking to you? I'm talking to you, Francis. When I want to know anything from you, I'll tell you, you long-legged son of a... If you want to call me that, smile. With a gun against my belly, I... I always smile. <laughs> Mucho lucky, Trumpus. That fellow is a good shot. He keeps tomato cans jumping down the road. Yes, that's so, Peter. Well, I know a fellow what can hit three whiskey glass in the air at the same time. Come on, boys, sit down. I'll spin the hide off here to game of stuff. <laughs> oh. Hey, boss. Number three can't get the station on account of them cattle blocking the whole right away. All right, I'll tend to that. I reckon I better dangle on down there, Steve. You want to come along? Sure, I'll help you clean them up. Just hang around your engine to keep warm. Well, listen, get them off. I've done my stretch, and I want to go home, go to bed. You better get your head back in that cab before some cow comes along and bites it off. All right, then. Steve, you go down there with them and bring the rest of that bunch back, and I'll cut a hole through here. Jack! Peanut, popcorn, candy, and chewing wax. All kinds of cigars. You know that? We'll be in the station in a minute. My goodness, this is terrible. I never saw so many wild cows in my life. It's much like Vermont, is it? I should say not. Uh... Howdy, ma'am. Getting off the medicine bowl? Yes. Should we ever get there? Say, you ain't the new waitress of the Lone Star Hotel, are you? No, I'm the school teacher. Oh, the new school barn for St. Creek, huh? Uh-huh. <laughs> Well, man, we wasn't expecting to meet you, but here we are, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, here we are. We'll round up every average kid in Wyoming, too. Well, that's fine. How many children are the Indians up here? Right, about 19, counting the Indians and half breeds. He's a lion pole camp, miss. There ain't but 13 all told. Ma'am, what you going to learn then, kid? Reading and writing and picking up figures? Yes, and history and geography. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, we still so darn critters know something about geography. They ain't got a lick of sense about knowing where they're at. <laughs> Thank you so much. And now where do you find the stage? Follow me, ma'am. 
and you'll never go astray. Right this way. I think it's safe now, ma'am. Thank you. Mighty lucky thing I happened along. A wild steer is an awful ornery critter. Oh, it did frighten me. Just for a moment. That steer's seen you face to face like I'm doing now, ma'am. It couldn't have been to me. Oh, thank you. I'm glad my man got your bags all right, ma'am. Take the lady thing right over the stagecoach, will you, Stephen? Oh, boy. Oh. Come on. Here, Ella, you better take your moo car home or your mom will spank you. Come on, you bad old thing. Yeah. Come on, boss. Perhaps you'd like to rescue that little girl from that wild steer. I'm sure she'd be impressed, but if you tried to make a fool of her, she'd probably slap your face. I'm really obliged to you, sir, for helping me. It's a great pleasure, ma'am. That'll be all, my man. Here you are. I want you to take good care of this lady, Ben. She's a special friend of mine. She's going down to Taylor. Sure, I'll take good care of her. Well, you don't need a spread of it. Man you. Oh, just a mangy foreman, ma'am. You don't have to pay no attention to him. Well, goodbye. Bye. All right, George. Wow. Smart, ain't you, Steve? Smart, pal. In case you got any ideas about my new lady friend, I just want to warn you that school marms ain't in your class. Oh, you're warning me. Mm-hmm. Well, see, usually I just beat you by a nose. This time I'm going to throw you in hog tie. Oh, you don't tell me. Mm-hmm. Paul Huey. Oh, Ma, they're too tight across the budget. Miss Taylor won't mind these suppers. You will put them on. Land sakes, look at all them folks there. Well, you'd think they was welcoming the President of the United States instead of a school, Marm. If I ever get them on, I'll have to cut them off. You put them on. <laughs> Take your fingers out of them sausages, or you'll get a bellyache, and your Ma will blame me. Put them both on now. I'm coming right over. All right. Well, Uncle Huey. Hello, oh, Dad. How are you? How are you? Glad nice to Taylor. see you. We've run the twins. Uh -huh. Rode 40 miles and still as dry as a bone. You're very lucky, Mrs. Huey. Very <laughs> lucky. <laughs> Alice, you put your calves to pasture in the bedroom. They can get a little nap before the Christmas, because the parson won't get here until a little later. Miss Taylor, Miss Taylor. What's the matter, Hans? Huh? You'll come tea. Fix. Uh, excuse me, folks. Hans got his help all snarled up about. Hans, so run along. Well, now, what's the trouble, Hans? Huh? Oh, look at that chicken. Ah, oh, you chicken. Well, if it ain't Emily. Trying to hatch them apples. Always wanting to be a mother, ain't you? If you only knew, Emily. Now, get, get. Well, now, Hans, what's the trouble? Boys, no work. Me so much work, I can't do everything. All right, I'll fix those lazy buzzards. Buggy, oh, 
Hurry up with them chickens and ducks. Well, keep that slant eyed muskrat away and we'll get through. Go on, Chink. Chop your story. Miss Della, Miss Della. We got no milk. Why not? Cowboy no get them. Mom. Why, you yellow belly biscuit I am it's awful cold in here. Give me that coat, cool leg. Why, Sam, your whole body's changing color. Hurry up, you wandering toe cat. Yes, ma'am. Bowleg, hurry up and get out of that tower. You're cleaning up. I need you out here. Just keep your shirt on, Miss Taylor. How'd she know I was in here? That woman knows everything. Here she is now, folks. <laughs> My, it's that grand having you here. Folks, this is Miss Molly Wood, the new school mom, all the way from Vermont. <laughs> what are them cowherders up to now? You look here now, honey. We can do quick making that noise. You'll wake up them babies. Stop trying to shoot them cans open. Here, use this cleaver. All right, Miss Taylor, but it'll take a heap longer. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Howdy, boys. Get ready for the celebration. Howdy, Howdy. 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 Howdy Pappas, my boys. You got here just too late to work, didn't you? <laughs> In the cool of the evening, when the food and liquor and women is ready, when I appear. I see. Hello, honey. Hello, honey. Where's the liquor barrel? That hadn't ought to be hard for you to locate. What do you say, boy? It's Steve. What are you trailing around with Trampas for? Why are you fellas all sort of Trampas? He's all right. Yes, he is. In a big belief. Looking for someone, Miss Wood? Oh, no, I'm just interested in seeing everybody. It's all so new to me. Oh. Are all the cowboys here now? Sure, I hope so. There's a whole lot of them here ain't even been invited. <laughs> a whole lot of them. Miss what Bella, is it? Uh -huh. Gina, this lady. Shall I go ring a bell? All right, you go ring a bell, yes. Right. Dinner, everybody! Come and get it! Come on, Miss Wood, I want you to sit in the head of the table. Come on. Had another meeting today, and their patience plumb give out. I can tell you that Cleveland's going to the devil, and it pays a man better to steal than to work. Then I reckon it's getting pretty close to his showdown, Judge. That's her standing in the window now. Captain Russell has got to stop. Yeah. Ain't she pretty, though? I wonder if she can dance to it. Hey, are you listening to me? Sure, Judge. And I agree with you. <clears throat> yeah, my, uh, my throat's mighty dusty. Let's go in the house. Well, I think we can find something in the house, maybe. I hope so. Sure, that. That ain't no way for a fellow like you to make a living, Steve. Don't I know it? Cowhands are dumber than a local steer. Freeze all winter, bake all summer. For what? For just to get enough money to get drunk 12 times a year. Yeah, but money's easy when you're smart, Steve. But you'll never get it balloting cows for $30 a month. Why didn't you wait for me, Steve, this evening? Oh, you was late and tramp has dangled by, so I come along with him. You ain't very choosy about your company. Maybe you'll explain what you mean by that. Nothing, Trampus, nothing. Maybe I could tell you belly full and maybe I couldn't. What are you driving at? Maybe I ought to compliment you, Trampus. You got so many calves this year, your cows must have litter, like a sow. Reckon it keeps you all wore out branding them. You're liable to talk yourself into a heap of trouble, my friend. Since when was I your friend, Trampas? Oh, all right. That suits me. 
How about circulating around the dance, Steve? That is, if you're through being sociable here. Why you let him say that to you? Because I'm smart. One job at a time. Never lose your temper. There she is. Looks pretty in her Vermont fashion dress, don't she? Say, she'd look good in an engine squaw blanket. Say, you buzzard, you know I got the inside track with her. I want to give you an even break. I'll match you to see who asked her for the first dance. Dead. You son of a gun, you. <laughs> How'd you know? Is it too miss? that France is going to give us that Statue of Liberty that she's been talking about? Oh, yes. It was in the paper just before I left. Excuse me, please. Yes, yeah, surely. Good evening, ma'am. Would you care to try a turn at dancing? You're from Virginia, I understand. Yes, ma'am. That is, I was born there. I always thought the Southerners had such good manners. That's correct, ma'am. Least ways they should have. Well, in New England, where I came from, a man always asked to be introduced to a lady before he asked her to dance. I ask your pardon, ma'am. Pardon, ma'am. My senior didn't dance with that big galoo. Can't blame you none. Ain't any of the girls want to dance with him. Would you like to spin around with me? Kind of figured we were introduced by that stage driver. Why, yes, I love you. I guess Eastern dancing is kind of different, huh? I'm sorry I'm so awkward. Oh, that's all right, ma'am. You'll pick it up in no time. Say, Judge, I wonder if you'd oblige me in a little social matter. What is it? I'd like you to introduce me to the new school mom. Uh, formal like. But from all the talking you've done about her, I thought you'd her a pretty good friend. Didn't I see you talking to her a while ago? Who? Me? <laughs> I don't know what you're up to, young fella, but I'll do it. Thank you, man. The honor is all mine. Oh, excuse me, Miss Wood, but this young man says he never met you. Well, I... Well, that, that is... Well, he ought to. He's been talking about you for a month. Uh, allow me to uh, make you acquainted with Miss Wood. Please, me too. Oh, you're the gallant young man that rescued me from a tame cow. Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm sorry, ma'am, but you must admit this was a genuine rescue. And you must excuse my friend Steve for being so clumsy and bow-legged. Would you care to sit down? Well, thank you. I am a little tired. I'd rather talk than dance. But I can't talk and dance very well at the same time anyhow. So sit down by the window. You sure are glad to have you out here, Miss Wood. Thank you. Now, now that we've been formally introduced, I'd like very much to go riding with you someday. Oh, yes? Now, you ain't afraid of me, are you, ma'am? Why should I be? No reason at all. I'm as gentle as a plow horse. And I'm powerful interested in education. Then I hope you come to some of my classes. I have several little boys just your age. Is the book learning to do a cow hand any good? Oh, it won't be all reading and writing and arithmetic. I hope to teach my children good manners, too. I'm sorry, ma'am. If, if you thought I if you thought I aimed to treat you that way, you see out here, us folks. We don't exactly understand. Well, you see, you're you're from the east, and we've been out here so long, and out where it's kind of wild, and 
Well, I tell you, when I when I first when I first Miss Molly, the parson's here. Won't you come and meet him? Dr. McBride? Yes. This is Miss Molly Wood, our new school teacher. Well, well, I I really I, I'm glad to meet you, Miss Wood. Hey, Steve. Where'd you ruffle the cake? Me for them there crullers. <laughs> Kate sent any interest to you. I expect I'll inform you that the most elegant lady of this outfit has promised me the pleasure of seeing her home to her cabin. You don't tell me. Well, now, ain't that just fine? You know, Steve, there ain't nobody I'd rather see beat my time than you. I don't trust you no more than a half-breed bandit. Which is a speckled trap, Steve, you are. I yeah. guess you better leave that door open, Mrs. Stock. It's kind of stuffy in there. All right, I reckon they won't wake up. Now, boys, be careful. Don't make no noise. You'll wake them up. But well, they got grilled in there, anyhow. Babies, aren't they? Never saw so many mavericks in my life. <laughs> Them's the kids. And some of them's waiting to be christened. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven beautiful sleeping angels. Say, it'd be funny if they got mixed up and someone was christened wrong, wouldn't it? The honorary low down horse beat you. Oh, he said it'd be funny. Get busy before the parson goes to work. This must be that Jasper brat. Looks like he has the itch. Wonder what these little varmints think about all day long. Not a gall darn thing. Getting mighty swampy around this bed. Oh, young fella, this is up to change your whole life. Now <laughs> sleep peacefully, you little maverick. Stop playing now, boys. Listen, folks, it's getting late. Some of you women have got to drive all night to get home. So let's christen the babies now. This country sure is getting fancy. Christening babies. Important school marms. <laughs> Pretty soon they'll be putting soda pop in the liquor. That's when I'll be getting out. Me too. I'll Here be right on. Just ride in here, folks, if you want to see the ceremony. Here's the christening water fountain. It's perfectly clean. Been boiled and framed for a new sock. Fine. <laughs> the child, please. Name the child. Charles Augustus Jasper. Charles Augustus, I christen thee. Oh, wait a minute. Why, that ain't Charles Augustus. That's one of Uncle Huey's breaths. What? Here. Oh, come to your fall, lay a night out. No, not lay a night. This is Charles Augustus. Charles Augustus, nothing. But I've just christened it. Then you'll unchristen him. Oh, it can't be done. Did you unchristen this child or you don't get another nickel out of me? Really, I... Oh, you, you, you've got... Oh, oh, something terrible. Someone has mixed these kids and we can't tell which is what. Oh, oh,
to some kind of be done about that. A most distressing and reprehensible occurrence. Reprehensible? It's mangy, I call it. It's plain mangy. Dickens can say if they find out it was us. Some honorary poke had done this deliberate. Well, who was it? Let's find the pair that did it and I'll brand him plenty. Well, he ought to be strung up. Yeah, don't worry, Chief. They ain't gonna find out we done it. No, sir, we ain't left, left no clue. Well, the fun's all over. I'm going to be moseying out before something does happen. Hey, what's that on Steve's pants? Land's sake! Why, that fat cat! Where's the poor cat? The fat cat! Go get him! 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 I'm sorry, ma'am, about what happened to Steve. But now that Steve's gone, uh, could I see you home? I saw you pin that cap on Steve. Aren't you ashamed of yourself treating those poor babies that way? Well, you see, I hear that some of them was female. So I had them introduced all around. I think your conduct is disgraceful. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. I suppose you're proud of yourself playing a trick like that on those poor mothers. No, ma'am. Yes. I suppose you call yourself a grown-up, responsible man. Yes. Yes. No, ma'am. Well, you act as if you were a child. Yes. No, ma'am. Is that all you've got to say for yourself? No, oh, ma'am. Yes. I don't think you're a bit funny. <laughs> <laughs> Now, that's the right thing. You were way off key last time. Now, all together. You're the one that's wrong. Now, let's hear you by yourself. All right. And you. All together now, and don't forget where your lines come in. I'll just help you so you can get it finished quicker. I'm afraid that hurt of yours is about to stampede. Sounds like it. I'll go see what I can do. <laughs> Count the splendid way you learned that song. I'm going to let you go ten minutes early. So school's dismissed. I've got a little surprise for you today. What is it? Oh, a new horn. Is it gentle? Yes. I broke him myself. And he gave me more trouble than you had, gentle than me. <laughs> I changed my riding habit. I won't be for just a minute. Don't go. Do me a favor and go just as you are. I'm sure the host won't mind, and 
I like you so much in that dress. All right. What is your name? <laughs> what are you laughing about now? Well, her name's Sir Henry, but I call him Hank for short. You haven't told me about that book I lent you last week. Did you finish it? That Romeo and Juliet? Yes, ma'am. I finished it. Don't tell me you didn't like it. Well, I ain't read any poetry before. As soon as I get the hang of it, it'll be as easy as reading the patent medicine catalog. <laughs> well, didn't you like the story? Well, they raised a mighty strange breed of men in them days. But in some respects, this Romeo was a pretty good hombre. Oh, indeed. Just a pretty good hombre. Yes, and he had his enemies and he killed them. Shows he wasn't no coward and who's he is picked on the draw. Do you approve of killing your enemies? An no. eye for an eye? Not if there's an honorable way out. No, ma'am. But them enemies was particular ornery. They had it coming to them. Well, what else? What didn't you like about Romeo? I didn't like him in that balcony scene. The balcony scene? Why, that's the most famous scene in the play. Maybe so, but not for me. What is his idea in traipsing up and down that rope ladder, anyhow? Why, you wanted to talk to him. Why didn't he go in through the front door? Don't you understand? Their families were enemies. Exactly so. Trapes up a ladder. That ain't my idea of a real man. Well, what would you do? Go in and kill a father? That would be nice. No, I wouldn't have killed him. But I'd have had a showdown with him, man to man. If he was too stubborn to call off that fool feud, I'd have grabbed Juliet right off that balcony and I'd have married her. That's just what he was planning to do. Well, what was he fooling around about? He loved Juliet. She fell in love right back at him. Why didn't he get to going? Perhaps men in those days realized just how much women loved the gallantry of courtship. Yes, I know. He couldn't resist playing actor on that balcony. Wasted so much valuable time and got them both killed. If I loved a girl, and wanted her, and knew I could take care of her, not in the words of Romeo, but in the feelings inside, you think I'd let that gulf stand between us, spread around on rope ladders, making up poetry? No, you're hardly a Romeo. But what would you do? Molly, I'll show you what I'd do. You're just as sure of yourself as ever, aren't you? Molly, don't play act with me. We don't fool each other. We ain't on no balcony. Don't you think the spring is the prettiest time of year to be married? But I don't want to get married yet. I've got my school, and I'm just getting started, and those children can get... School? That ain't no real woman's job in life. Listen, Molly. I don't aim to stay here. Not if you'll be my wife and partner in what I aim to do. I'm pushing out further west to Utah or Nevada. To do out there what Judge Henry done right here in Wyoming. Make more United States out of raw prairie land. I like you. And I admire you more than any man I've ever known. But I'm not sure of myself yet. This country is so new and strange. I feel like an alien. An outsider. Oh, I don't know how to explain it. But I just feel that I'm different. Women are funny, Molly. I don't understand them. Oh, yes, you do. But I'm glad you think you do. What is it? Sounds like a cast woman. Uh... Find out what the trouble is. Come on, I'll be right back, Molly. Just a few minutes.
blow, Steve. I didn't know you was coming up this end of the rain. Oh, I'm just kind of... kind of drifting around. I've just been putting a monogram on a couple of strays. Yes, so I noticed. Steve, there's no use talking around things. You've been putting Trampas's brand on somebody else's calves. Oh, what's a few calves more or less to a man that's got thousands? I'm sick of nursemaiding someone else's cows around for no more than enough to keep you in smoking tobacco. Don't talk that away, Steve. You and I have done a lot of loco things together, but there's some things that ain't only loco, they're plumb wrong. Ah, you take life too seriously. This whole country's taking things more seriously. I ain't trying to lecture you or play Sunday on what's right or wrong. The ranchers are getting plumb sick of having their herds trimmed out, and they'll soon be posses out with ropes on their saddles. Times are changing, Steve. They can't get away with this sort of thing much longer. Well, I'm carrying a nice limber rope to make it easy for them. If they catch me. You blame hard-headed fool, you. What are you going to do? Turn me in? Steve, nobody's talking about that. I reckon I couldn't be sore at you no matter what you did. But listen, Steve, you and I have been friends too long to find ourselves lined up on opposite sides in anything like this. Don't put me in any hole like that. Ah, oh, shucks. How do I know what I'm going to do? This country's getting too civilized, too solemn. I got a notion I'll be moseying out. The gold field is somewhere. There's no need you leaving, Steve. You know you can stay on here as long as you want. Yeah, I know. The mangy old buzzard. There we go, Steve. Right on time. The only thing I don't like about this stealing business is the hard work. <laughs> hard work, but easy picking. <laughs> you lazy son of a gun. <laughs> And you got it all straight, haven't you? You let at least a hundred head of the authority critters stay on the bank and leave them there. So in case anybody's trailing us, they'll think we got scared and left the whole bunch. And you swim the rest down the river. And don't let a hoof touch the shore until they hit the rocks at Boulder Creek. Or they won't leave any tracks. Daddy? All right. But I think you're crazy for leaving any of them. You gotta pay, you gotta pay a little for safety, you know, Steve. Throw away one, grab two. Always play percentages. Never try to be a hog. Percentages, Steve. I learned that dealing feral. Remember that. All right, Trampas, go ahead. Come on, boy. And a huckleberry.
Well, I wish I was in Jackson Hole right now. Say, for God's sake, can't you get that fire off your face? Think of something cheerful. Your girl or a cold bottle of beer. Sure, seguro. Hey, play on that tune I loan you. You know. As muchachas de Wyoming, I truly found las muchachas de Wyoming. I que dirán, no saben el dar un beso, y las de Sonora hasta estiran el pescuezo con el truly, truly pan, con el truly, truly pan. No saben el dar un beso. Come up there, boys. Get their guns, honey. Como estamos, boys? What is your calling card? Get in Never mind. We left them in the deck. Thanks for the ditty, Pedro. Sure, That's real entertaining. I knew something like this was going to happen. Where's Trampers and the rest? Trampers? <laughs> you got us all wrong, partner. Only us three out on a little hunting trip. Yeah. And you must have been drinking your coffee with a cup in each hand. Time up, boys. I'm going to take a look around. Howdy, boys. Never expected to find you here. We found the cattle down the ravine. Whoever was night herding them dust. Time up. Real accommodating to you boys building this fire for us. We smelled it right across Wyoming. I told me I wouldn't be lighting that fire. Who? Who? Uh, told uh, me. You always was a rotten liar, Steve. You got four of us. Ain't that enough for one gather? Not by a long sight. What do we do with them? Hang them now? No. We'll take them down to the cabin by the oak. Maybe we'll catch the rest of them. Come on, boys. I'm plumb out of the back, Annie. You fellas got the making? Well, she's breaking. It'll be daylight before you know it. The boys ought to be showing up any time now. I didn't look for them till morning. Hey, when are you go when are you gonna do this thing? Sun up, I reckon. Keep quiet, Jimmy. We fooled you fellas good a couple of times. Thought you'd lost our trail. You can't beat that Dublin back in the water. I learned that trick off in an engine. Funny how you pick up a thing, ain't it? You never know when it's going to come in handy. Dollar and a half you owe me, Pedro. All right. I pay you tomorrow. <laughs> I'll be glad when this is all over with. It ain't over for me. No? I'm heading for the Teton. Hunting? Yeah, hunting. There ain't only one hombre responsible for this, and that's Travis. And I'm hunting Travis till I find him. Here's some of the boys now. We ain't caught hiding our hair in our, any of them, boss. Told you there wasn't no more of it. Come on, let's get this thing over with. It's a pity to waste that loyalty on a skunk like tramper. Come on, on boys. Let's get going. Come on. Let's go.
take him up a bit. Please, please, I don't want to die. Please. Oh, shut up, Jim. Take your medicine, Grace. Why don't you ask them for a drink? Maybe that will help you. Nebraska. <laughs> you can have this. Don't worry, I didn't steal it. Don't forget to wind it and keep the stem side up and it'll always run. It's good for four dollars in any regular saloon. <laughs> Thank you. Do you... <laughs> you can have my saddle, honey. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> honey, that's a heck of a name. Got a pencil? I guess we can get the horses now, boys. You got my gun, ain't you, honey? Yeah. I want you to keep it with this and give it to him after it's all over. <laughs> I wish it was Trampus. Get a use, do you? <laughs> no, I don't want. I don't want to die. All right, turn want... them on, boys. I don't want to die. Boys, got anything to say? You don't want to say anything? He wanted you to have this. There's a note inside the holster.
Better careful you send him again. You'll get me shot someday. Unconscious, but you the know, doctor said he's out of danger. You know, he belongs in a hospital. School mom's house ain't no place for him. What'd they fetch him here for, anyway? They didn't fetch him. His horse brung him here. Funny, ain't it? No, it ain't funny. Say, he's been hanging around here so much, the horse thought he was home. <laughs> well, here you are at last. Where'd you try to get that medicine? In a saloon? No, I was just waiting in there while Doc mixed it up. Well, it's about time you showed up, honey. If we had to depend on you, he'd have been dead already. Yes, ma'am. Don't call me, Miss Taylor. It's a long way to town. You boys have been just wonderful coming here and seeing him every day. If hadn't been for you, Miss Molly, I reckon we'd have lost him. Honey, you wait outside with the other boys. I'll be wanting to use you later. Yes. Now you quit your worrying, dearie. He's coming along fine. Why don't you do what I told you and close up your school for this afternoon so you can get some rest? Now, you've been here every minute that you ain't teaching them kids. And you ain't had the right kind of sleep since he's been sick. Oh, I'm all right. I'm not a bit tired. Now, I know better. There ain't nobody can do two jobs at once without getting fagged out. Except me. Nonsense. Recess is over now. I'll have to be going back. Oh, thank you, boys. All right, Miss Molly. Oh, honey, I meant to ask you, have you seen Steve around? Steve, Mom? Oh, sure. Steve ain't with the box eights no more. Oh, I thought it was funny he hadn't been around. Well, if you see him, tell him his gun is here. He must have borrowed it from Steve just before he got shot. I found it on him. Yes, ma'am, I sure will tell him. That is, if I run across him. All right, thank you. Gosh, honey, I meant to warn you about that. Gee whiz. I wish I had a woman thought as much of me as she does of him. Come on, Matthew. Let's go around the bunkhouse. Maybe some of that mixer's left down there. What do you children do? What do you children do? Playing rough work and steady wood. Sure. That guy with cattle teeth and one wrench in there. You children mustn't play like this. You're liable to hurt each other. Oh, he said he would. He said he'd be seen. Seen? Sure. He wasn't afraid when they strung him up. He didn't whimper at all. Steve strung up? Sure. Well, what are you talking about? Oh, Judge Henry Foreman had to string him up because they caught him stealing cattle. You mean hanged him? Sure. Is it true? Is what true? That Steve has been hanged? Now, who's gone and told you that? The children. How on earth did them kids know? Then it is true. Well, you might as well know it. Don't see why you wasn't told in the first place. Steve was strung up with the rest of them cattle thieves. Oh. Did he do it? Somebody had to do it. He was in charge and it had to be done. 
That's our kind of law. Don't you realize that was downright murder? Now, there ain't no use talking about it, dearie. Crimes is ranked different in different countries. And out here, stealing's about the meanest, the lowest thing a man can do. But that doesn't justify killing. And Steve is friends. It ain't a question of friends or enemies. It's a question of right and wrong. Why, if we didn't hold a rope and a six-shooter over them outlaws, you couldn't teach your school at all. Why, our lives wouldn't be worth nothing. Do you think I'll teach my children to believe in that? Do you think I'll help raise a new generation to approve of murder? Well, where you come from, they have policemen and courts and jails to enforce the law. Here, we got nothing. So when we have to, we do things our own way. Do you think it was easy for him to have to hang a friend? It was a darn sight harder for him to do it than for us to bear it. And there he is, just because of lawlessness. Somebody took a shot at him. And you can't tell me it was Indian. I suppose this country has destroyed every human feeling in you, and in him. I suppose in time I'd feel that way, too, but I won't. Then why don't you go back where you come from? I will. As soon as he's well, I won't stay in this place any longer. All right, go on back home. You don't belong here. We don't want your kind. Go on back east, where living soft and easy. Sit on your silk cushions and get hired girls to wait on you, and drink your pink tea. Why, when I married Taylor, I drove a ox team a thousand miles from Council Bluff to this very spot. I fought Indians with my father's rifle and him lying dead across my knee. I killed a Sioux squaw with her own axe. And you were talking. This is a new country we're building up here, and there ain't no room in it for weaklings, men or women. Go on, back east, and I for one will say good riddance. Now you listen to me. My people built a country in New England, too. And they fought and died just as bravely as you Westerners. Do you think you're the only people who ever fought Indians? Did you ever hear of the Cherry Valley Massacre? Well, my grandfather Stark was killed in a blockhouse at Cherry Valley. And my grandmother worked 90 miles on foot to get help to save the 14 survivors. Don't tell me I can't do anything when it's got to be done. I can stand anything you can and more. I'm not going away. I'm going to stay here and look after him. And now you get out of here. Get out! Get out! You get out of here! I warned you, Steve. I warned you. How could you have done this to me? It's all right, darling. It's all right. I'm trying to understand. Let's never talk about it. Never let it come between us. Forget it ever happened. I can't help it, ma'am. I think Romeo was a mangy young boy. Life. 
Yeah, I do seem to recollect something about him being shot a while ago. Engines, wasn't it? Yeah. Somebody plugged him in the back. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hello, sweetheart. Come in. Boys, the only woman in Wyoming that's always on time. Well, do say five o'clock, no? And here I am. <laughs> Senior and I are going to go over and get measured for some chili and some flapjacks. After that, we'll be back to the bar for more punishment. <laughs> uh, come on, darling. Uh, hey, did you see who I saw? Yeah, the mangy cow thief. Looks like a lot of bad news to me. Sure does. Hello, boys. Hello, Hello Slim. Slim. When's it gonna be? Tomorrow? Yeah, the bishop's making a trip special just to marry him. You don't say. Ain't never seen a bishop. What's the bishop look like? Oh, just like an ordinary shoe drummer. Except he wears half his clothes backwards. Howdy, Miss Woods. How do you do? <laughs> it won't be Miss Woods this time tomorrow. No. Good gracious, you do look pretty in the picture. Much prettier than that girl on the Pride of Iowa kind of course. Oh, thanks. Where's Ma and Dad Taylor? Oh, they'll be along soon. They came by Indian Creek. Oh, that's fine. Well, then I'll get everything ready. And you come right on. Right Howdy, Miss Molly. Oh, hello, boy. Welcome to the bride. We've been awaiting all morning. Well, I hardly expected you so soon. They got something planned. I can see it in their faces. Howdy, boy. Howdy, Howdy boy. Howdy, boy. <laughs> He's plumb right, Miss Molly. Could we borrow him for a spell? Can I trust you? Oh, we'll all be very good. Pretty good. Not too good. <laughs> Which is the honest man? Not one of them. <laughs> well, I'll trust all of you. I'm going upstairs now, and you can drink to his health all you please. Sure thing. See you later. We'll be waiting. You don't mind my going with him, do you, honey? Of course not. The boys have their right to you just as much as I have. It won't be long. Anyhow, the tailors will be along soon. We'll have plenty of time alone where we're going. We travel west. We find just the place we want. To make our home. I hope you'll never be sorry. I hope I'll always be able to make you happy. To keep you happy. That's going to be my main aim in life. Now run along. The boys are waiting for you. The boys brought your things and they're all upstairs. Oh, oh boys. Hi. Hello, Brightburn. Well, we're right. set up about four of them. Let's get to it. I'm much obliged to you, boys. I didn't know Francis was in town. It looks like he's heading for more trouble. He's been hanging around. Talking plenty and drinking more. Three. Which reminds me. Well, boys, my last drink with you. Single. Here's how. Well, fire and fall back, boys. Someday maybe I'll step off, too. Here's luck. I'm glad you know there's a friend of yours in town. Did he mention he was a friend of mine? He said plenty about you. Well, forget it. Sure, what I hear goes in one ear and out the other. Hot weather, ain't it? Hot or up on Zeldaway. This friend of yours said he'd drop in again, in case it's any interest to you. Well, it ain't. Let's have another drink. Say, did you get what you was hunting in the Tetons last time? Yeah. Sheep was sick in the Tetons all year. Krampus claims different. Say, we'll take this thing off your hand if you want. Save me the trouble. You say the word. Any or all of it. No. Thanks, boys. This is a matter between us two. I'm only hoping you don't drift around. But a fellow don't get married every day. That's just it. You got to think of her. Who else am I thinking of? Well, I'm acting mayor of this town, and I'll put him in the calaboose till you get married, anyway. Well, seems like I smell pregnant junk meat, boys. Well, Joe's place is getting pretty crummy all of a sudden, eh? Come on, sit up around with the boys. 
Our hands making their mangy wages. <laughs> Somebody left the door open and the wind blew in. Ah, uh, come here, Travers. Let's drink to the bride and groom. Might as well get good and liquored for the wedding. Well, I heard the only way a man can get shot in the back is running away. <laughs> <laughs> hey, who? I'm a friend of Trampas. Yeah? That's true. You know what Trampas claims about that affair of yours down in the Tetons? That you run from a rustler with your tail between your legs. <laughs> Say, fella, if you wasn't drinking, you might wake up in the morning and find yourself seriously dead. <laughs> Come on, Joe. Drink hardy, boy. I turn your tail, you ornery hound, and shove your nose into the ground, for I'm an hombre, Texas bound, so early in the morning. <laughs> oh, I'm sick of it. Hey, you. You've been spending enough talk around about my cattle deals, and I haven't a showdown with you here and now. I don't want any ruptures here. Shut up. You keep out of this. You I'm talking to. Trampas, I'm trying not to have any trouble with you just now. Yeah, you've been dodging us for five years. You've taken plenty of trouble to keep out of my way, but I got you corralled now, and I'm calling your hand. All right. What do you got? I got the belief you're a lying, white livered skunk. This country ain't big enough to hold the two of us. I'm giving you the sundown to get out of town. It's too bad you had to say that, Trampas. Get out. Get out by sundown or I'll shoot you on sight. Boys, you'll oblige me in this. Sure, we understand. It's something that nobody else can do for you. I knew you'd all see it that way. We'll see that nobody interferes. Where have thought Trampers had the guts? I don't want her to know till it's all over. Sure. We ain't saying nothing. You wouldn't understand. He was raised different. So long, Joe. Bye, honey. Bye, Bye boys. Boy. It won't be long to wait. The sun will be down in less than half an hour. Well, he's forced it on you. So hurry up and get it over with. Yeah, we want to get some fun out of this wedding, too. You ain't worried none, are you? What, us? Who, me? Why, of course not, you ornery old cockroach. Waiting for you. Who had to tell you about it? The woman downstairs. I wanted to run out and find you, but I didn't. I waited quietly in my room. I'm sorry you had to be worried. It doesn't matter. Nothing matters now that you're back again, and it's all over. Let's don't think about it. What will we do now? What now? Now? Nothing now. I know it's a heap worse for you. I wish you didn't have to wait alone. But it won't be for long. Why, what do you mean? I did my best. I let him say things to me no man ever said before. If I hadn't been thinking hard of you, I reckon I'd have killed him then. I gave him a chance to quit. 
he'd gone too far before the others. It'll have to go on now. What are you going to do? I'm not going to let him shoot me. But... We can go away. It's not too late. You can go away and leave him here. I've got to stay. No, no. There's something else. There must be. Think what it means. Killing in cold blood. You don't think I want to do this? I tried to forgive the other killing. Those cattle thieves and steeds. I forced myself to think of it as you did. A public duty, law and order. But this, this isn't the same. It's just to satisfy a personal grudge. If folks came to think me a coward, I couldn't look them square in the eye ever again. Or you either. But that's just... Crime. I don't know what you call it, but it's something in the feelings of a man, down deep inside. Something a man can't go back on. If anybody happened to say I was a thief, I couldn't let him go on saying it. It wouldn't matter what other people thought, but I'd have to know inside of me that I thought enough of my own honesty to fight for it. Then it's to be like this always. When will it ever end? There'll always be killing to do until this country ain't a meeting place for men like Trampers. Then think of us, you and me, our life together. That's what I am thinking of. Your life has always been your own. But now it isn't. You've given it to me. Don't take it away. When I think of tomorrow, of you and me, and of... <laughs> if you do this, there'll be no tomorrow for you and me. Come down.
I'll go down to the post office. Why, you ain't finished your last drink yet, Greasy. He got him. He's dead as a cold mackerel. Reckon he's landed all. Dean Nebraska down here, Ken. Well, it's all over. You can come out now, Ken. Thank heavens, it wasn't you. Oh, I love you so much. 